But look, I think first of all, it's a fact that for the period that Mr. Looney from 2020 to 2023 was a CEO, uh, I mean, the, the performance of BP share price has been totally underwhelming. And, um, you know, not just vis-a-vis -vis Exxon and Chevron, but also, uh, you know, they deliver a total short return, kind of half of what, for instance, Total did and well below Shell. And, uh, and this was uh, certainly the result of a strategy uh, which was intended to uh, blindly uh, shrink uh, BP core business uh, in oil and gas and venture in other business in clean energy, uh, where, quite frankly, is highly uh, debatable whether BP has uh, any chance to succeed. Um, so you're saying that the eminent uh, economists and analysts over at the IEA, led by Dr Fatih Birol, are wrong and that actually oil and gas isn't going to peak in the next couple of years. Just want to confirm that. The basic premise is that the IEA is wrong. No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, actually, I think the IEA is telling a lot of, is giving a lot of data uh, to make uh, all of us understand, uh, and they said it very explicitly, that uh, the path to get to net zero by 2050 is very narrow. So, which means it's very unlikely that uh, we are going to be uh, to net zero in 2050. And don't get me wrong, I'm very happy that we all, you know, not just the, the oil major company, but we all as part of society, aims toward this goal. Uh, but I think it's very rational for a company to make as its base case uh, a scenario which actually it's very, very unlikely to happen. And, in, and on that front, we're not asking BP to renegate it or the strategy, but to adapt the strategy to the reality. But, but Giuseppe, why don't we take a look at the reality? Because what these oil companies promise in terms of capex compared to their outsized revenues and profits from oil and gas is minimal. Let me just go through this. BP invested £300 million into renewables and low carbon in the first half of 2022. That is equivalent to just 2.5% of £12 billion in profits. By comparison, it invested £3.8 billion in new, new oil and gas projects. That is more than 10 times its low carbon investments. Don't we look, need to look exactly what they're actually doing rather than what they're promising? And what they're doing is investing a vast amount of their capex in oil and gas still. But look, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the, the value of the company is based uh, on, uh, uh, on, uh, on the expectation of what the company promised to do. So we, will, uh, we are uh, looking to BP as a company who has committed to deploy, uh, you know, out, out of a 130 billion capital plan between 2023 and 2030, 60 billion of these uh, into, you know, clean energy uh, initially. And again, I don't have a problem in BP investing in clean energy. I do have a problem when BP invests, for instance, 30 billion roughly in renewable and power. And on top, and on top of that, they, they, they target a return on capital of 6 to 8%, which is well below the BP weighted average cost of capital. Now, I would say this to BP and to any other company. If the company doesn't see growth opportunity where it can deploy capital at the WAC or above it, they should return capital to shareholder. Instead, I do not have a problem when BP invests, for instance, in bioenergy, which is much more close to the core business, and where they're targeting a 15% return on capital. So again, it's not that we're saying they should stop in deploying capital to uh, clean energy, but they should do it uh, in, a, in a very, um, I would say, rational way, making sure that they deploy capital in the, in the area where they're right to win, and certainly not, they, do, they do not deploy capital below the BP's cost of capital, because this is destroy value for shareholders.